To create a stitch sampler, you need to take a sample of fabric and fold it in half. And put it with the fold edge at the top and put it into the machine so that the seam allowance, the edge of the fabric, reaches over to the 1.5 centimeter line, which is the same as the 5 8 inch line that's up above. You can see the 1.5 centimeters because it has a hole in it. So as you sew, the edge should show you half of the hole if you have it in the right position. Put your fabric up under to just where the needle goes in and lower the presser foot. When you put the presser foot down, then you can take your finger and put it on the joge de tomeru, means to push the needle down. And if you push that once at the beginning, then it will always stop in the down position, which is what you want. Using your foot pedal, uh, put your uh, foot on the foot pedal and go forward five stitches. And then push the kaishi nui button, which means back stitch, and go backwards five stitches. And then after five stitches, let go and sew exactly over the same place and keep the edge of the fabric lined up with the 1.5 centimeter line. Then sew to about 1.5 centimeters from the edge of the fabric. And if it gets crooked, you can just stop and even it up and then stop sewing one and a half centimeters from the edge of the fabric. At this point, the needle should be down and you can lift up the presser foot. It's the black knob in the back and pull it up and then slide your fabric, turn it 90 degrees so that you're, it's facing you. And then put the presser foot back down. And to sew across the bottom, I'd like you to practice a zigzag stitch. And to make a zigzag, come over to the design number button and you had it on number one for a straight stitch, switch it to a number five for the zigzag stitch, and it will show in the window here. Then switch your, if you want a large stitch, you can push this up high, as high as seven for a wide stitch like this, or you can push it smaller to have a narrower zigzag. The stitch length, you can control it, you can make it uh, go as high as five, or 4.5 for a zigzag, or you can make it smaller for about 2.5. So we'll do a smaller zigzag here today. So then just sew forward and it will switch automatically now and create a zigzag. And then you can zigzag again over to about one and a half centimeters from the edge. And your hands can guide the fabric. Again, I noticed that my seam allowance is still about one and a half centimeters because the edge of the fabric is right there where that hole is. I've gone a little far for this edge, but making sure the needle is down, lift up the presser foot and turn the fabric again 90 degrees and you can see a nice zigzag stitch. The final stitch is called a basting stitch and you're going to come back over and change the design number to back to a number one and then you won't have any zigzag this time, but for a number one, you'll push the stitch length as high as it will go to a number five. And then when you have it set like that, you're ready to begin and put your foot on the foot pedal and just sew straight up. And this is creating a long stitch, which is used when you uh, are quilting and it's also used when you want to hold something in place temporarily and it's called a basting stitch. Because it's a basting stitch we don't back stitch here but normally you would if you're sewing on your pillowcase project you would sew to the end and then push the back stitch button for five stitches and then come forward but now because it's a basting stitch we're just going to push the needle to lift it up and lift up the presser foot and then we're going to pull the thread out. And because it's a basting stitch, we want about 10 centimeters of thread. And then you take it and you can cut the thread on the razor blade at the side of the machine. And if you just pull it from the back forward towards you, it will cut it. Go back to the beginning where your tail was and trim the thread from where you started to. And that's a good habit to do. Every time you finish sewing, go back to the beginning and cut off the threads. And that's a stitch sampler that meets standard. 
and you can turn it in and you'll be ready to start sewing on your pillowcase project if you've done this.